How can internet technology help your business? The Bottom Line investigates. Hello, I'm Lisa Hazelhurst and welcome to The Bottom Line. If you click on send or receive an email, and what we're doing now is basically we're opening up the uh, email facility that you have here. And what you should see on your screen in a minute there are about five options of opening up the email account. And you've got a toolbar down the left and a toolbar across the top. What I'd like you to do These business folk are having a business meal in the Surfers at Paradise Cyber Cafe in Brighton. A big attraction is the food, but the main attraction is the internet. The cafe is booming and is run by a husband and wife team. It's beneficial to have the restaurant and the website design house working alongside each other because it gives us the opportunity to showcase what the internet can do. We run awareness sessions, which means that we get businesses down here and we can explain to them in a nice, comfortable environment exactly what uh, the internet is all about. We researched the marketplace for two and a half years, both domestically and internationally. I think in total we visited something like 25 different cyber cafes and found that they were more cyber rather than cafes, so we felt we had one up in them. The emphasis is on food, food and service and the whole ambience of the place. That's where the return clientele comes from. But they also cook up website designs for business people who want to get on the World Wide Web. So far, they've invested a quarter of a million pounds on this venture and they feel it's worth it. The market is growing at a phenomenal rate. It, the potential of the market is astronomical because it's constantly changing. But for many business people, finding a way through the maze of jargon is a job in itself. Lines right down to the difference line. between email, internet and intranet, email is really all about using the system to be able to send messages to each other, much in the same way as the phone system, except the other person doesn't have to be there. So if you could leave messages on the phone system, that's the equivalent of, of email. The World Wide Web is, is, again, similar to the telephone system, except there's information that you can go and look at. So using a simple browser, the sort of thing that you see here, you could go and look for information, whether that be information, let's say, on a place you want to go on holiday, you could look for, whether it's buying things, uh, whether it's far more detailed information, you can go and look at that over the internet. The intranet is businesses using that sort of technology inside their own company for the sort of benefits that they would want to get out of using it, making information available, being able to communicate with each other, being able to share. One small like, uh, Portsmouth-based company, Net Commerce, is picking up business through internet retailing. We have shops on the net, which is Europe's largest shopping index. This is where, in fact, the consumer will come to call to make their shopping list uh, of the products that they wish to buy, and this product will actually point them in the right direction and produce the list of uh, internet retail outlets to go and call on. This company sells leisure and computer game software, but they see the future potential for their growth being linked to the growth of the internet. The internet offers a, a wonderful opportunity. You don't have to be large to be successful. We will be closing off the books after our first year of trading at a half a million pounds, which I believe is a phenomenal statement about the growth of the internet and indeed perhaps the success that we've enjoyed through trading over the internet. Next year, I estimate that we will close the books at an excess of £1 million turnover. This kind of growth is confirmed by the computer systems giant IBM. They have their European headquarters and major research facilities like Hursley Park in Hampshire. I see numbers from, uh, for this year from £8 billion to in excess of $100 billion. Um, where it's going to be is somewhere in the middle of that. Part of the problem, of course, is, is how do you count it uh, if somebody sells something over the internet but the financial transaction is done external to the internet, does that get counted? But no matter how you look at it, it is enormous and is significantly going to change the way people do business. Doing business on the internet means that companies, large and small, have to have the ability to react quickly. The problems that we often see with companies in, in this area is they can getting onto the internet is perhaps the smallest part of, of the problem. The real issue is the people and processes behind that. How do you process the orders that are coming in? 
How do you make sure that if somebody sends you an email asking you a question about your product, that you reply to that in a reasonable space of time? Because um, certainly if you don't, people will see that you're not providing service and that won't be satisfactory. So it is very, very important to worry about all the things inside the company, how it's going to react, how it's going to work in this new way. The internet also offers an easy way of paying for goods by credit card. But how secure is it? I feel that we were perfectly within our rights to claim that it is safer than actually shopping in the high street itself. And the reason I say that is that if you visit any of the bins at the end of the day, behind many retail outlets, you will find, find counterfoils from the impressions uh, given on the credit cards uh, just lying, literally drifting in the breeze. And each one of those has the credit card number on it. This, of course, is not part of the process that we have, and that's why I feel that we're offering a much, much more secure medium. Banks and other financial institutions may be affected by this new mode of commerce. If so, how? I think the High Street Bank branch is safe for the near future. Everything that we've seen so far suggests that telephone banking, cash machines in the wall and internet banking eventually will add to the channels of banking available to the customer, not substitute for the High Street branch. Even though the traditional High Street Bank may endure these changes in the way business is done, one thing is certain, change is happening in the business world faster than at any other time in history. The radio market took 35 years to actually get to a 50 million audience. The television market took 25 years, the cable market took 10, and the internet market took only five. So I think that that must, in my view, set very nicely in context the enormous pressure that is, is put on business as a whole to respond to the very phenomenal and fast advantage that we have with the internet. We see the future of the internet being lots and lots of, of various devices, um, many of them perhaps without a keyboard. Let me give you an example for the future. Um, today, if you were on holiday in France driving along in your car and a little light came on on the dashboard saying the brake pads were worn down, what would you do? Well, you know, look in the book probably first to find out what the, the light was and then start trying to find a garage. In the future, we could see where instead of that coming up as a little light, it would come up on a little screen saying your brake pads are worn. Um, and then it would say, and by the way, here are three garages within 10 kilometers of where you are. And this particular garage has a, a mechanic that speaks English. Okay? Now there, the system has actually gone to the internet, got all that information without you even knowing it. So that really is, is where we see the future, where we will have these embedded systems where you won't consciously say, I'm getting onto the internet and I'm going to be typing something in. It will just happen and the information will be provided to you. Meanwhile, the question of who's controlling this business phenomenon known as the internet remains unclear. The internet is something of a rogue area at the moment. Um, nobody really knows who controls it. It sprang out of the US Defense Department, but uh, who's running it now?